The Conceited Nobody. Every Tuesday at 8 p.m. What up, what up, what up, what up? We back with another episode of the best podcast you never heard of. Uh, episode 105 The Conceited Nobody. We back up in here. You already know this is with Taurus, a.k.a. Hard Frog Harrison, a.k.a. The Commodity, a.k.a. Some that, this, the other. I wasn't fully prepared with my script as uh, I'm freestyling. I feel like I should throw out another A, A.K.A. Hey, man, I think so. Hey, man, I think so. Hey, man, I think so. Hey, I think so. Hey, man, 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 I I think we got a dope ass lineup. We got the homie up in here. We always do it how we do it. We introduce the regulars, the nobodies, and then we get to our guests. We got the homie uh, Kodak Juvie and this motherfucker, Super Juvie Renaissance. He got all these AKAs and he ain't got the AKA. Y'all be smacking on air. My girl was like, man, why is he smack? My girl said something about that shit one my day. Last nugget, hey. <laughs> that was my last nugget. I smacked my last nugget. That was that celebratory smack. That was him at the end of the road. <laughs> Pow, there you go, nigga. But no, we got the homie Renaissance Jewel being here, aka the, I'm not going to use some AKAs, aka the man who makes it happen. Uh, AKA the superstar. Can't forget that one. Can't forget that one. That's, 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 that, that's the one. Hopefully, you be DJing for one of my events one day. You know, I box. Yeah. So, you know, I'm trying to bring. I'm trying to bring the lights to this showtime to this motherfucker. So hopefully you be DJing. I do it. I do right it. There, type shit. You want to see MGM theatrics. We're going to turn yeah. the fuck up yeah. like it's some MGM shit. Exclusive everything. You are, if y'all don't know, if y'all never had the privilege or pleasure watching Juvie fight, when he come out, he always come out. I think he has the most flashy shorts. Here, the only person who has the sensibility. <laughs> I ain't bullshit. The only person who has the sensibility to recognize what's going on. That in addition to being a fight, it's a performance. He come out with the most flashy shorts, and I and I'd have been, you know, I'd have been to a few fights, especially around here, and I ain't seen nobody who come out with the same pizzazz, the yeah. same, the same. Yeah, it's, it's always the event. That motherfucker got something air lab. Yeah. But anyway, uh, we here with special guest man, DJ motherfucking T Rex. What's good? Two X's for y'all who don't know. After midnight, it turned into three. That's how it be. <laughs> <laughs> DJ porn sites and shit. Hey, DJ yeah, Triple T hey, Triple X. Hey, what's up? What's up? We here. Uh, how you doing, man? I'm good, man. Glad to be here. This another um, testament to how networking works. We met him at the link up Monday. Shout out to DJ J Renee at her event that she had. And me and uh, Julie were walking around introducing ourselves and shit like we was uh, Mormons. Like we uh, we was a president and a vice president, yeah. And shit, <laughs> yeah, trying to get cool with the cuz other states. Yeah, and hey, what's your problem? What's your problem? Will you? <laughs> hey, what is the Flint water bad? We come here to fix it if you will let us. We came to some. Uh, but anyway, it all worked out, man, because that's what linking up do help network cross platform. So it's a privilege to have you here, man. Uh, be checking him out online. He gonna tell you more about what's going on with him. Uh, how you feel? I'm feeling good, man. Like I said, I'm glad to be here. Like what y'all be doing, like on some real stuff. Like most people you link up with, you hear from them once or twice. They want that follow, and then that's it. Y'all, y'all reached out to me yeah. first. Like that's that that means a lot, and that's why. Sure. Whenever I get down the road, I'm gonna definitely show some love, y'all. Yeah, definitely show sure. love to everybody. I said you've been showing love uh, for the show before, like even coming on. So we definitely appreciate that too. Definitely, man, and that's what we talked about that before. We often had conversations. Like, uh, he's probably one of the one and one out of every shit three that say comments from past shows, so you know they've been listening to the be listening to the shows. Yeah, you know yeah. What so Real shit. That, yeah. Real shit. Real shit. And it's it's a testament to how we talk about all the time. It's a, it's something about people here feeling like they already made it, so to speak. Like where they where they want you to jump through hoops and stuff to network with them when I'm not that hard pressed for any kind of fucking conversation or let alone to get anybody up here. I appreciate everybody who do come up here because we always have a great time. But 
I don't know, hear people up, they refer me to their manager and shit, man. That shit blows my fucking mind. I'm like, I could have talked to Beyonce people for all this yeah. shit. You know what I'm saying? So, like I said, it's a pleasure to have you here. I'll just share you that link to your inbox if you want to share like with somebody. Some, some, some type shit, like, I'm sitting right here next to you. On everything. We didn't make everything. Right. And On then everything. you reach out to me. Let's say I throw the, let's say the event come, like, I fight at the casino. You're mm-hmm. like, I'll ask him, like, hey, man, let me, uh, you some kind of thing, have me the DJ slot, you know, see what's up with the uh, promoter. And I'm like, contact my boogie, call contact. You know what I mean? Like, what? <laughs> right, right. Talk to my like, people. Like, like, wait a minute. I, just, I just met you. Yeah, like, come on, cuz. Like, yeah, you you there, like, already? <laughs> type shit. Like, yeah, so it's just like, that type of shit, man, be like, I get it. Like, you hold it, try to, like, rebrand and shit, like, a professional shit, but it's like, come on, man. Right. You feel me? Like, you ain't got to. Don't forget, yeah, don't forget, like. Yeah, like, come on, man. <laughs> but again, shout out to you. He also came and kicked it with it at the 100. At the 100. Oh, yeah, so, that was so, nice. That yeah, was, that was sure. nice. Did you enjoy yourself? I definitely did. You enjoyed y'all sure. coming. I was, I was in my panicky mode and shit when it went. At the beginning? At the beginning, man. It was, <laughs> I don't go events. I don't. I'm not the kind of person to shit you see around a whole bunch of people. And shit. Me so either, I'm, man. So yeah, I'm kind of nervous. Just, that's why y'all saw me ducked off on that chair the whole time. Just, I'm just chilling, yo. Watch it. I'm worried about the turnout. I'm worried about the uh, the the money at the bar being made. And I looked up and I seen y'all walking in with that fool. <laughs> Hey, I went over there and knocked this up like, without your head. Hey, I apologize. Hey, I said that is the most nigger shit I've seen in a fucking <laughs> club ever. <laughs> hey, you just don't know, man. My mama blood pressure. I said they that they fucked up the bar. I said they done discovered they go get some food shit. <laughs> But but it all worked out, hey, but man. But you know what? I would think they probably knew they'd be helping us out by spending money at the club. That's they what probably, I'm saying. They probably I don't thought they probably don't do nothing like that, bro. I don't do nothing. He a DJ. He a DJ. He's been in many clubs. He's been in many of clubs. You been in you know, the club scene as far as like, and you know how the money and shit go, like how they be booking nah, up for this. I ain't never been like on that, that end either. But I've never thought about walking to the club with no Burger King. Never. <laughs> never. But you never went to movies and stuff, no. Uh, that's I was sneaking. They didn't sneak. They ain't sneak. They ain't sneak. But but it all worked out. It didn't fuck nothing up, man. And more importantly, y'all came, y'all supported. So that's what stood out more than that. But when you when you were starving and shit, somebody do like that, push the last water over and shit. You remember that motherfucker keep the water over. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but all jokes aside, though, man, I'm glad you enjoyed that shit, man. Cause like I told them, I couldn't enjoy that shit to. Monday, you know, so I also a uh, tight man with the event. But speaking of events, we're gonna shout out to uh American, she's having a release for her CD, Chaotic, Friday. this Friday at 6 p.m. Damn, I can't ever remember exactly where it's at. If you're a follower or a fan of hers, you can contact her, figure out how to get tickets. Um, we go to that event, it's gonna be pretty dope. Uh, this is snapping it up. Doing area, we get busy. We get busy. We get busy. And in addition to that, I just want to give a shout out to the Polish lady. She had her uh, Polish lady live event this past Saturday uh, on High School Road. It was it was an event. I knew what I was going for. I was going to see the strong black women. Tell you how strong they was. I, I had no qualms about what was going on. I knew that I was the the, the, the bad guy there. Yeah, yeah, the, for the, sure. The motherfucking un- unlucky guy in the crowd. Uh, she had she had a good time, so man. Man, listen, what we talked about the other day, I say, I tell everybody all the time, uh, when you have women's empowerment, all they do is sit there and try to outstruggle each other. <laughs> That's all <laughs> they do. That's all they do, man. I, I went to work today, I had a headache, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, I feel you, sister. My headache was this big and it was screaming for accessory. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But, but they all, it was a lot of people there who was um, small business owners. Um, work. They go. They go to work. They have small businesses and they have children. That was a common link between them all. And it was. It was cool, man. They had my shout out to uh, Vibes. Vibes and uh, Boomer was there. Vibes was there being a real good sister. Oh yeah. Vibes was there like stabbing. And she was like Oprah and shit, man. That motherfucker. Oh she yeah. Told I it. So she took listen to us. She told Vibes. She said, "Yeah, that's my babe." Uh, vibes in the back, wave at him. 
<laughs> he did just like that on cue. I said, God damn, she got a remote control with that nigga and shit. She said, wave at him. He's in line, nigga. Man, that nigga a lot in line and shit. Amazing. Hey, they out there getting their little shit on. I always say this, hey, though. But shit, hey, it takes a strong, you know, team, man, no matter what your, shit, how, what your shit looking like at the time. As long as you got y'all motherfuckers both in that raggedy-ass car to that motherfucker Hell get fixed yeah. up. Hell yeah. Shit. And, and the thing with that is, though, man, like I, I'll say that we always talk about hard workers and people, you know what I'm saying, who grind it. Uh, Nicholas, he a testament to that. He, he grind like a motherfucking shit. He has the most harassing grind. Shout out to Nicholas. All this lady be on her shit. I told her, I asked her about co hosting with uh, Joe Talks, the event on the 12th. Mm -hmm. And she said she got to check her calendar. When she say shit like that, I don't think shit about it. I don't think she bullshit. And I legitimately know that she yeah, is a know, busy she person she and shit. Yeah. And I know that if she can't do it, she gonna do it. Mm -hmm. My prediction in five years, if this world, you know what I'm saying, if it's still going, it's going, going, she gonna be in a hell of a place of prominence to where she gonna have a hell of a story to tell just based off her ground. She get mm -hmm. busy. Shout out to her. Shout out to her event. Shout out to they, uh, they little move. And I mentioned vibes and uh, Boomer. Boomer have it in mixtape release party this Saturday at Icon. Ooh, really? From 7 to 10, yeah. I'm gonna go fuck with him for a little bit. Yeah. He asked me, was I going? And I said, yeah. And in my head, I said, not really. Mm -hmm. It was just I was on the spot. Yeah. I had this run over the year. I had no yeah. desire to go to Icon. Because I was like, yeah, I'm on the same shit. I'm like, man, we got so much shit going yeah. on this weekend. I'm gonna have the full day of editing. Yeah, yeah. That's Saturday, so it's like, I'm gonna fuck with it though, man. I'm going to there and check him yeah, out. I'm like, definitely gonna have to pull up on They be up there, like I said, they be grinding, man. They be showing love too. Definitely. Yeah, they be showing love too. I feel like I'm missing something coming up this weekend. What else going on? Not too much. Man, I want to say something else is happening. I'm just shitting. It feels like it, man. If, if we forgot you, what they say on the uh, Iron Man, I used to read the linear notes on the uh, album releases. Yeah. Blame it on the head, not the heart. <laughs> Y'all yeah. remember reading that shit, man? Yeah. But yeah, we're going to have a fantastic show, like we said. We're going to kick it off. Speaking of Saturday, uh, I asked y'all off here, had y'all seen it too? Yeah. I just went seeing this shit Saturday. Yeah. Overall, I was, I was impressed with the show. It was a good movie for me. Uh, it was entirely too fucking long. It, it went too fucking long. And, and what I think that they didn't. They didn't need to go into everybody's fucking story of fear one by one. Mm -hmm. It was like reading a novel. Mm -hmm. Like if you read a book, and I don't, I never, I read about three Stephen King books in my life, and they all this big. Mm -hmm. But if you like reading this shit, they some page turners. They real detailed and shit. Like he one of the people who I read his books, and I'll be like, how in the fuck is he this detailed? You know what I'm saying? It's so fucking scary. Yeah. Like how relaxed he has to be to free his mind and shit and write the shit he write. And the movie, I guess, it tried to be as detailed as it could, cause this motherfucker was long. It was like two and a half, about no, about two hours and fifty minutes. It was so, it was so long that I've never seen the other two, and I get everything. You said, oh, uh, you never seen the other. I, I never seen the other one. Wait a minute. Oh, you talking about? Cause y'all seen the first it, but when it was children from this one, right? Well, no, I ain't seen. You ain't seen the first one I seen. Uh, no, so, <laughs> he said so, backwards. So it's like, I, you know, I went back, I went back, of course, and did, after watching that one, back and did a little quick back study, of, you know, a little short clips and reading through the story and shit, and it was like, oh, okay. Oh, uh, yeah, you can get the general uh, synopsis yeah, from that. Yeah, yeah, yeah you, you know? still get it, but that's, I must say, kind of weird to me. That's like hitting the bitch in the ass before you fuck her in the pussy. <laughs> it's pleasure, but it's just kind of off. It's just it's a little not, bit off. Know, the first one is way better than both. <laughs> Well, first off, man, the, not, not the, it's like the only very, two. very first one, the yeah. old school. I said that one was actually scary as opposed to the newer one with all these CGI. I mean, it might be scary. Shit type shit, you know what I mean? Well, if you see Pennywise and shit from the fucking 90s, man, you see, you like, you don't get this goofy motherfucker away from me. Yeah. But at the time, that shit was scary. But the first time I seen them both, though, and it's, it's kind of hard for me, like, as a dog. I ain't scared none of that silly shit. Yeah, yeah. But, but, with that said, uh, the Pennywise character is much scarier. Like, you look, that shit looks scary, man. That fucking little jig, he be doing that dance, that Friday oh, yeah, dance. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That shit. Um, I was down there like in middle school or when the first one came out. But, I don't know, man. I actually like this one better. 
uh, the CGI shit is way over the top. It's, it's way over. It's like some uh, Marvel shit. Mm -hmm. But my my whole gripe with this shit, it was it was too fucking long. But overall, I enjoyed the shit. It had a lot of jump scares. That motherfucker. And I and I hate that I'm one of the jumpiest people in the world. And it embarrasses the shit out of me. Mm -hmm. Like when some shit happened to the whole bitch come out about me. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm like, I do everything except scream. You know what I'm saying? I've been thinking about this fake ass movie. You got me out here like a bitch. But, and I prepare for it. Like, I hear the music building and shit, and then I do one of these. I close my fucking eyes. Nobody in the movies can see me. Nobody in the movies can see me close my eyes. But no, it was a dope movie uh, for the most part. Uh, when I seen the runtime, I said to myself, I felt like a child. I said, I'm gonna have to pee. That's what I said, I'm gonna have to pee. I'm gonna be missing some parts. Cause I said the movie drinking all the slush. And I went to, uh, <laughs> yeah. I went to the uh, movie and grills. Did you? Hell yeah. I ain't never been to there. You ever fuck with that? Yeah. I ain't never been in there. I go to the movies all the time. I was in there studying this shit. Movie grill or something like that. Yeah, yeah that was decent. Cool. Is it? That's, that's what's up. I, I be fuck with the AMC stuff, so I be having a little five dollar little rewards and shit. Mm -hmm. Going in, so I wait for him to hit twenty dollars, and I say, "Don't I got some?" And the shit be ten dollars. This shit, <laughs> <laughs> I walk off and shit. Like I show these motherfuckers. They be looking past that. Yeah, I like yeah. to go there because they got the recliners. <laughs> the recliners. Be you ever said the recliner and that bitch didn't recline? Cozy. You ever said the one that didn't recline? No. Uh, yes. I, I ain't said it when it didn't recline. They are some nice seats. <laughs> I hit that bitch and didn't move. I was so fucking shit. I said, I paid for it. I said, I need at least two dollars. I'll be sick too, bro. It's yeah. so different. Yeah. That's, that's the purpose of us going. Yeah. With me, at least. I know, man. I know. I'm in here to relax, man. Get your cheese back. Nigga, you ain't worried about it. That's why you get I, I don't want to be the complaining ass nigga about the non reclining yeah, seat, you know? Yeah, yeah. Come here, I'll be in there, oh, hey, you sitting in my seat. That's why I tell somebody, it's like, you know, I'm paying for this. Uh, 813, 812, those are. But look, don't nobody say anything about these shit. I'm not tripping. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But if somebody wants their seats, I want mine. Okay. But now the cool movie. Um, other weekend shit. You fuck with boxing? I don't really watch yeah. it, but I. I I did you got the part you like? Did you log on? You got the. Did you got you watch that man? Hell no. I mean, we did. We still have. Yeah, you got the login. No, that's it. I ain't. Well, I had the login, but I ain't, I ain't know because last time we fucked with it was July. Yeah, it was. I really was like some mad. I found a stream for it. I was like, home. I'm like, oh damn, I hate these scrappers. So I just yeah, yeah. on the app and, and we watched that shit too. But uh, man, that nigga was. Art, He's nice, man. I think Mama Chink don't want to fuck with him and shit. I don't think he, man, nah. I don't think Mama Chink don't want no smoke, man. And the thing is, I think it'll be a, uh, it'll be a, uh, a majority of a split. You think it'll be that close? Man, just cause, um, uh, I think, uh, cause Devin Haney, he, he crazy, but. I be, I still be underestimating Lil Chico Bowman, man. He just got some good ass moves. You brought Lil Chico versus Campbell. Like, I don't. Um, in his last fight. No, I ain't watched that. Lil Chico went to war with fucking Luke Campbell, man. He, and Luke Campbell so washed. He got uh, he got stopped by Pedraza, I think. If he, he oh, got beat. Oh, for real? But the thing with that is, though, Lil Chico, man, like, I was a fan of his early because they started overrating me. Now, when he have a close fight with somebody, they start trying to overrate the person he fight. Like they start trying to act like Luke Campbell is something incredible. I'm not impressed with Lomachenko like I used to be. I don't think he'd have a tough fight with. He went to war with Campbell when Campbell would have got stopped by Comey. He had got stopped by Tiafimo. He had got stopped by Devin Haney. He had got stopped by Chain. Mm. He went to war with, with the same person they had a whitewash. I don't think that. Lomachenko had that move and that herky jerky shit, but he he ain't got the size to fuck with Devin. Then Devin's fast and strong. I don't think he fuck with Devin. Devin's fast and strong. Every every shot looks like he had pop. Like Devin that. Haney said something, and we're gonna go on because everybody hits it. It's like we yeah. are. <laughs> but Devin Haney said something. It was real shit. He said he better get me now. This is the best shot to get me because I'm a monster. I'm growing. You know what I'm saying? Devin Haney gonna continue to get better. Uh, that Tyson Fury shit. Listen, I ain't watch it. I tried to, man. That, that car started so fucking late. 
I was trying to watch that shit, man. I fell asleep. Yeah. I, it, it was late. It was late, man. And I and I don't fall asleep on fights. I fell asleep on that motherfucker. Like, I didn't start seeing tweets to that motherfucker to the next morning just because it was like so fucking late. Hell yeah. On some other sports shit, this is gonna tie in. We went down back to last week episode. DJ T Rex <laughs> took he took he took issue with us saying that the Chiefs are gonna come out the AFC. How old are you, man? 26. 26. When you under 30 and you say you're a Patriots fan, I can get a benefit of the doubt. <laughs> if you older than that and you be talking to Patriots shit, I'm looking at you like you fake as fuck. Well. <laughs> no one was cheering for the Patriots when Curtis uh, Martin was running back, when uh, <laughs> when uh, Drew Bledsoe was the quarterback. When Tom Brady came, they, they cheated with that first Super Bowl when they ran the little snow out the way. That's when people start fucking with them. Right. If that's when, if you were from that era and shit, I can say, okay, you a Patriots fan. But with that said, you said that you think the Patriots coming out the AFC. I, I didn't say I think. I said I know. I know. There's nothing, no chance, man. You seen the first two games this week? Who did they beat the first two games? They beat the Steelers and then Miami. They beat now, the hold Steelers, on, hold on. Say that, say that as slow as you can. Steelers had three points. Miami had zero. Man, who did the Steelers have? <laughs> they are without their two best players yeah. from last year. You said they beat Miami. They out there. Miami can't beat the Hurricanes. <laughs> Miami can't beat the college team. Miami. Hey, Miami beat us every year, though. Man, not on this fire still. They got a fire still going <laughs> this year. I'm telling you, man, them motherfuckers out there look like what? Bobby Boucher would tear their ass up. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody can play against them right there. <laughs> But them motherfuckers, Patriots looking nice, but the reason why I take, uh, I don't feel like they're going to win. Mm-hmm. Every time they have a team that should dominate, they never win. They only win when people like the Patriots ain't going to do it this year. That's when they, yeah, that's I, when can, they, I can see that. That's when they always fucking win. It's just that they too out there on their radar. Uh, they got Antonio Brown. He came in killing this week. I was shocked at how much Tom Brady went to him. Because uh, yeah. Tom, Tom Brady really ju- judicious where he spread that motherfucker out. Yeah. Wes Walker probably came to the locker room like, I thought we was friends. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I got four fucking targets. I'm Mr. Underneath Slot, motherfucker, 12 catches. But Antonio got out there and showed out, man. And um, Tom Brady, he's a smart quarterback where he know that if he got the man, he's going to go to him. When he had Randy Moss, mm-hmm. he did that shit. When he had uh, Mr. Glass Gronk. He went to him a lot, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So he did the same thing with A.B. And speaking of A.B., Antonio Brown is, he, he might he might be getting hit by this Me Too movement harder than anybody since who maybe Cosby, Weinstein. They out here for his motherfucking head. I didn't even, I, it's crazy. I, I seen allegations, but I, even, I don't know like the details. He got so many. He got so, so many allegations behind him. It's, it, it, this shit right here don't look so contrived. That is, like, we, we done seen them where it seemed like they is bullshit. That Bill Cosby shit going from the 60s and 70s was fucking outstanding. But this shit, once I... I, I guarantee you, man, these bitches, they, they favorite team is the Steelers and the Raiders. Because they came as soon as the debacle happened with him and the team. They over here talking about he had a sexual relationship, it seems, with the first accuser who went directly to a civil suit. She ain't got the criminal court. She said, fuck this, I need that bag. You know what I'm saying? I'm getting married this weekend. And that's the thing. She, was, she wasn't available for like to talk to the NFL, which she has recently. She talked to him for 10 hours. I don't understand what the conversation's like. What? And why are you talking to the NFL? Why? Why? If I, I fuck you at the hotel. How's you at my job telling people what happened? <laughs> you at my job telling? <laughs> yeah, that shit is crazy. Hell <laughs> yeah, yeah! Like, can you imagine? Can you imagine that you you get into an argument with somebody at McDonald's and shit? You pull the McDonald's. You go up to the job. And that motherfucker gonna talk to your supervisor. Yeah, that motherfucker was out there and shit, trying to cut me and shit. That shit is crazy to me. Um, she she wants money, and it's crazy because they said that she couldn't meet last Saturday because she was preparing for a wedding. Huh? Everybody got a girl. Put yourself in that situation. You and your girls were getting married, and she and she's telling you, "Hey, Antonio Brown was over here trying to fuck me and stuff," and you thinking, "Must they bitch up on TV with this shit?" And we supposed to be at the at the wedding. That ain't, ain't nobody thinking about that beautiful dress. 
or or you know what I'm saying that beautiful uh, ring you just gave. Shit, but I'm just saying. Yeah, that's what that that's what everybody thinking about. Yeah. <laughs> Can you imagine that shit? How do you shit, just try to see him? If that's your girl, how do you react to this? Man. Like if your girl tell you, yeah, I used to be his trainer. This is the last time we talk about this. <laughs> That's how you do that. Like, what would you say to if she kept telling you he used to he used to put his dick on my head? I'll be sitting down and I look up and I see him talking around there. <laughs> like, what do you what do you tell your bitch? Like, what do you say? How do you respond to that? Right. Don't you be we're supposed to be focused you, on something else. Like, oh, <laughs> right. right. You can get right. patting that bitch on the dick in. Oh, it's okay, man. Like, yeah, what are you saying? Like, what is he saying? Because he going through. He, like, got he got married last Saturday. I mean, like, why would you like? <laughs> <laughs> That's crazy. Unless he in on it. I mean, and then there's that. He could be in on it. Then there's that. How much? How how broke are you? How much money do you need to where you let your bitch say she again? Uh, that shit's unbelievable, man. Like I don't like, man. I don't, he on some pimp. He either that or he just on some old shit. It's you know, it's a fine line between pimp yeah. and old shit. Yeah. It's a fine line in that uh, situation. Yeah, like you said, it's a fine line. What, what was your thoughts when you heard this, Trey? I think he just, you know, taking the fame, the money, and everything, and just acting reckless. You know, like I read in the article, one of these articles, it said it's one of the uh, the victims, I guess you would say, said uh, it's like he's like living a rock star life, but he's a football player. So I don't know if he's just trying to. You know, live the, live his best life, thinking his money. You know, gonna look out for him at the end of the day, or I don't know. It's just when they said living reckless, like what exactly did they mean? Like, as far as doing what you want without caring about anybody's feelings, anybody, anything, like doing it for you and you own. That's how I feel like he's doing. It. And these and these are they saying he's not paying a lot of people back, like he's taking it. You know. Get some, get some people not paying them back and he's doing these things to these females. How do you give so, gifts to a millionaire? What gifts are they actually giving a rich-ass nigga? Like, what you know, gifts are they giving? You somebody on Instagram like buying their own boy chain and buying their own boy cars and shit? It's like, yeah. I always wonder, like, yeah, is that <laughs> shit like, you like, like, really like that shit? Like, you like, oh my God. You, you know, excited yeah. or something? Like, you know what I mean? <laughs> like, you got the bread you know, like, to do it. Oh, yeah, that shit. My thing is like people saying he's not paying them back. Like I don't, I don't. And when they say he's living a life that he wants to, we in a society where money dictates the rules. Yeah, absolutely. Money dictates everything. You know, what I'm saying uh, rich people can do shit, poor people can't do. Um, when you at that level, you you used to certain conversations, free comments, free things like that. My my issue with I don't know if he's innocent or guilty. It's in my mind on how for opportunities. And snakes work. I lean towards the innocence. Yeah. Cause it's all about the time. He's been in the league for about nine years. Yeah. We we haven't heard any off the field issues at all. That's right. We've heard he didn't throw me the ball. He didn't. We heard football right. shit. So now once he's having an issue with, with the helmet shit, toe, all this shit. Yeah. It's weird how everything just start coming out the blue and shit. Yeah. And, it, and it, it's just strange to me. Like, why is it relevant now? And these things didn't just happen yesterday. They been happening. Me too, we've been going on for about two years. They yeah. really could have been done grabbing. So why is it convenient now that he's seemingly getting the ups on everybody who's against him? He went against the Steelers franchise. If you watch football, you know they have a staunch uh, reputation on how they deal with players. They keep it what they call family atmosphere and stuff. And if you don't agree with it, should we ship you out? Similar to New England. Why, as soon as he beat this system, so to speak, get his trade, and then he going uh, shit on John Gruden, media darling type quarterback coach, he get up out of there. He seemed like he finesse his way out there, get to the best franchise in football. Yeah. Now it's starting to fall apart. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And, it, and it's telling to me because as of now, he hasn't been suspended. And we've seen Tom Brady get suspended, and Tom Brady is the ultimate gold boy in the NFL. Yeah. Uh, I don't know how this is going to play out. I hope that in any event, which, which it always does, the truth always comes out. For sure. <clears throat> so I want to see how that shit play out, whatever. The funniest shit to me, though, was the doctor. 
Did you see this? Yeah. Goes out the farting, farting in the his face. The doctor said that <laughs> Antonio Brown was in the office farting in his face, being rude, <laughs> and he didn't pay his doctor bill. He said he kept farting in his face. Kept farting. That's what. I did. Come on, man. Come on. Come on. Come on. Bro. Come on. Like, why would you? Why would you not say that? Sir, <laughs> sir, hey, what do you say? Like, 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 that's weird <laughs> shit on both ends. On both ends, like Antonio Brown, the fucking best receiver in football, is in your doctor office. Farting on your stethoscope. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And you get on the media and tell about it. And can you sue somebody for that shit? Um, can somebody be sued for like, farting without permission on you? Because it's saying unconsensual. That's like fucking, that's like air rape. It's like, yeah, it's like he's just like, oh, you there? That like, shit that's crazy. That's like somebody my burping bad. in your face. Like, my bad. Yeah. You know, yeah. In my face. You got to be careful there. <laughs> that doctor said me too. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I was assaulted. What were they doing? They had to even do that shit. Right. Right. You know what I mean? Like, we check. And how are you not paying your doctor? He's a $13,000 doctor. Just keep doing it. Yeah, you feel me? Like. It's crazy, man. I said you get maybe he gets colon checks or whatever, maybe. But it's like, even then, it's like, what? <laughs> <laughs> That's what I said. I said it. I was like, what? Then you can uh, you kind of understand that one. <laughs> yeah. Hey, man, I was over. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, and some other sports dude crossed over to the hardwood. Uh, I shot y'all the video, LeVar Ball. He was having a discussion. I don't watch, <coughs> excuse me, reality shows. You said you don't watch much TV. I, I like TV, quality TV, but I definitely will refuse to watch reality shows <coughs> or scared to reality. Yeah. Uh, they had a clip from the, uh, I don't even know what it's called, the Ball Family Son. You know, LeVar Ball was having a discussion with his son Lonzo when they was talking about their brand, the Triple B uh, brand that took the world by storm maybe two, three years ago selling tennis shoes for $400 a piece. Great marketing. It's kind of like this. He was selling his big sex for hundred dollars where people would say, oh, that's expensive. But they're not thinking the context of consumership. You know what I'm saying? Where it's only expensive if you can't afford it. This is cheap to the rich people. Yeah. And if I'm aiming for this particular uh, demographic and shit, that's why I'm buying my shit. Yeah. Um, everybody knows the fallout with the partner that they had from their brand to where they found out he was like embezzling some shit. I think he took a few million dollars from the family. And it sent everything in shambles. From what I got from the clip, uh, Lonzo was on there and he was saying that they need to just scrap it. Yeah. He said they need to scrap the whole thing. And he took issue with it, uh, LeVar did. He said, yeah. why would we scrap it? He said, this is what I built. And then Longo retorted uh, because the person who was a big part of it was fucking it up. And it, basically the whole world, something he said, everybody see it. And when he said that, that was telling to me, and it showed me the, uh, the dynamic between him and his father as far as perception go, when he said everybody see it. <clears throat> and what I mean by that is, he was more worried about the outside perceptions mm. of what was going on. And I could tell that LeVar took exception to that because he said, this is the brand that I built mm -hmm. for my boys. This reflects all three of y'all, the three ball boys. So him being so emotionally attached to that brand and his creation, he take offense to that. He yeah. said, just because they said that it's fucked up don't mean it's fucked up. He said, we the foundation. He said, that wasn't nothing but apple on the tree. Lonzo said, no, nah, he was the branch. He said, well, we take the branch off. Yeah. It still don't destroy the fucking root. He said, that's like somebody telling me that we should abandon you because you was a, uh, what did he say? Was a, uh, he said you was a, damn, what did he Because you was damaged good. Damaged good. Yeah, Two or three yeah. years of damaged good. good. You can see in Lonzo's face that he didn't like that. It gave him a sour taste in his, in his mouth. I totally understood where the fuck uh, LeVar was coming from. Sure. And, and it come from a father's standpoint and shit to where just because somebody says some shit about you, he's not saying this shit about his son on a personal level, but he know about branding. Mm -hmm. He know about worth and like what they doing is that the commodity issue. Mm -hmm. He knows that you're not as high on people's radar as you was and people starting to downplay you as a player. A healthy Lonzo Ball is still a future top flight point guard, mm -hmm. but everybody ain't thinking like that. He's just a step of Markel Fultz right now. They done put De'Aaron Fox ahead of him. Uh, they even got Dennis Smith ahead of him. People who was around mm -hmm. that same class. 
LeVar Ball said this shit on some, this is how people view you, so do it mean you throw yourself away? Because they see you as damaged good. But as polarized as LeVar Ball is, they want to make it like, oh, he called his son damaged good. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? And I think, hell yeah, what was your thoughts on that whole uh, situation? Like you said, I just thought, you know, he was being like, like a father mentality, trying to give him the best advice, and he just was having tunnel vision and thinking about himself. And that word, like you said, the media, they gonna do what they can and try to they try to create conflict in the world. So, of course, they gonna bring out damaged goods. And they, I've even seen that article that you sent me, it even had quotations around damaged goods. Like, they trying to promote that it's a bad thing. When, like you said, it wasn't. Yeah. Well, you're just trying to give them an example. What about you, Jude? Yeah, no, I feel the same way, man, just because it's like, like, man, it just, it's, to me, it's just as simple as it's like, you done, uh, you done built some shit, and then just because somebody told you that motherfucker was ugly, you done, you quit working on it. You right. know what I mean? You're <laughs> you're you're building, you're gonna start over, you feel me? Like, it's like motherfucker, I ain't even done building this motherfucker yet. Right. Like, fuck you, you feel me? Instead of like, damn, this shit ugly. Everybody saying this motherfucker ugly. I might as well start over and make something new. It's like, you might as well just keep building on the building that you keep doing until, you know, they, you know, wait to the finished product. And they're like, all right, that motherfucker, damn, type yeah. like shit, you feel me? So that's how I looked at it. Yeah, I'm gonna tell you something else though, how come the building gonna quit getting built? What it is, Lonzo just start building. Lonzo don't feel like it's his baby like his daddy do. Um, he gonna he gonna come into this point to where he he wants to be his own man. Mm-hmm. And you trust you believe you got people in his ear. Your father this. He been hearing it for so long. And he it's it's an attack really on masculinity and fatherhood too though. They don't like when you got a strong man in the house. That's how can they galvanize so much of the uh, high mom. You yeah. know what I'm saying? They wanna put KD mom up there. They wanna highlight LeBron mom until she start getting pounded by Delonte West. Yeah. They wanna highlight uh, uh, the Green. What's his name? Draymond Green mom. Green. Every time it's a father in the picture, they demonize him, whether it be Richard Williams with Serena and them. Yeah. Uh, who else? What other fathers? They they always push to the back. They, well, Tiger Woods had the situation where you really could have highlighted his father. They gave him no press. You know what I'm saying? They yeah, never yeah, want to talk yeah, about yeah, the man yeah, unless it's course, negative. This reminds me of another sports uh, story, father and son. Floyd Mayweather and uh, Floyd, Floyd Mayweather Senior. Yeah. To where they had that split based on ego shit, but how it all came full circle. Because at some point in their life, I think Lonzo has to turn on his father. It always happened where you have to have that I'm a man moment. Yeah. And you gotta go see what it is out here and shit. But then once you go get that experience, you come back full circle like, damn, I know what the fuck you were saying. Yeah. So in a situation like this, you can tell that LeVar full hands on. You can tell he's a dominant figure and stuff, dominant personality. So it's gonna be tough for him to let go and not take it personal. Just with Floyd father. Mm-hmm. We seen him with Roy Jones' father. Yeah. It's always the same situation. Because, you know, you know, you know, you know, hell yeah, you know hell I mean? yeah. So it's gonna, it's gonna be, it's gonna be some shit, and success heals all wounds. So the more successful he gets, yeah. the the, and then and then it's the show's added. Yeah. We don't know exactly what else is mentioned in that conversation. We don't understand what conversation they had off air. Yeah. But when you wake up and you see how they trying to turn you against your father and shit, man, that's scary. It's yeah. scary when people try to do that shit. Uh, all right, all right, say he, he, now we got a non TV watching ass DJ. I don't know, you gotta you gotta watch TV and show so you can put the right drops in on your songs and shit. Well, you know, send the right, right clips and shit. Hell yeah, yeah, but yeah, yeah, yeah. we gonna zoom through it real quick. Did you watch this last fire? Uh, uh, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. It's so easy yeah. to slam the rain. That was uh, well, that's this one, uh, uh, those shot up. Man, point blank range. This nigga. Bro, those shot up the motherfucking uh, joint. And them niggas what do you have? What do you have? Semi automatic. He had a semi automatic. Like, yeah. Man, yeah. bro, I'm talking about like, this is nice me. He could have nipped it, nigga. Couch. I'm oh, let loose, bro. Semi automatic. No, 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 that that made that me that question that. Tupac's death. <laughs> it makes me question Tupac's death even more. How can they survive a Tupac death? Hundred shots, uh, young dog. Man, <laughs> man, man. But shout out to my buddy Wood, man. Man, Lala, man, she just get more unbelievable as it goes on, man. Like you think she was slowly progressing to get better, man. Like 
the little scene where she wasn't gonna be nothing. She was she really like, she was like, she was like her, her Ted Kat's son came to the house was like, you know, oh some kids, you know, hit me with bulls and that shit. And she also, who hit you? I'm gonna go beat him up. <laughs> no. Don't do that, Lala. No. What would you do if somebody hit your kid? I would beat him up. Goddamn right. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Exactly how the shit was. The shit was goofy. The boy came <laughs> at, she came at, man. The whole scene, they the got too, they got too stuff. much that filler, man. Yeah, it's too that, much filler. Yeah, that was real. That was too young. And, mm-hmm. and, go ahead, go ahead. Terrible acting. I'm, and like you said, you think that she progressively get better, but she like the person who you like to see just sit around. Like you ever like somebody and they start talking and shit, you're like, this is the stupidest motherfucker I have ever talked to in my life. <laughs> I, can't I like you better when I didn't know you was stupid. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's like, I, I like you so much better than when you was just Carmelo's wife on MTV. That's it. You know what I'm saying? I hate your acting. You know what I'm saying? It's fucking garbage. Man, simple interview. It ain't, man, it ain't even, I don't even like being targeting her so much, but she's so out there. She she's just, there. I looked at her and I saw which Holly was here. Tommy Yates girl, I saw which Holly was here. Holly was the best character on the show. She's the only character I think who made you feel like it was yeah, real. Yeah. That bitch seemed so real and shit that you didn't like her. You didn't like her. I don't have any affection towards nobody character on the show. Yeah. To, like they don't make me feel like it's, it's a real thing. Right. I hate it. I hate it. Holly. Yeah. Holly was so much of a good actress and shit. Yeah, that bitch looked like at this show and said, "I'm getting out of it. Kill me off." <laughs> I want. Like, who who want to quit this week, B? Had that nigga choke me. Had Tommy choke the shit out of me. Get me off this show. Um, Dre out here snitching on his phone and shit, you know what I'm saying? John said they didn't write this shit the morning before. He yeah, shit. on everything, man. They got up in the morning. They was like, oh, fuck. Like, he's writing. <laughs> he had his writing, like, hey, who got the script? Got the script. The he's script. like, I oh, thought you had it. Oh, nigga, no, I ain't got it. So, we'll write something real quick for him. <laughs> you write that bullshit. Uh-huh. <laughs> I can't wait till next Sunday just to slander. And they got the economy sized pills. Look, man, they got. What's that shit? They got that, man. Listen, they got pill bottles. It's big of drugs. It's no, it's no name brand. It's no crack. It's no meth. It's no. It's just drugs. <laughs> you know what I'm we don't, we don't know what the fuck they selling. What are they selling on power? What are they selling, nigga? They selling I've been, drugs. I've been wondering that shit though. These oh, motherfuckers are selling drugs. It's like they went to Sam Club and like, said, "Give me the big old drug, like, that yes. does the drugs." That's what. Pa- hey, this shit is garbage. In contrast, did you watch the final? Uh, Snowfall. Yeah. Snowfall. That shit's so fucking. Nah. Confusing, but it, it was confusing. Me. Nah, it wasn't because it's an alternate universe, right? It was him like, like a, a dream. Like imagine it. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Like his best case scenario yeah, type shit. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. That shit. That shit was so well written. I'm gonna tell you, it kind of was off. It, it went totally away from what I expected. But it was it was a well written episode. I don't think I'm gonna say though, this is the most. What can I say? This was the worst episode. Yeah. As far as the writing and yeah. the planning, I don't think they because the end didn't transition from the dream. Like they didn't say this yeah. is the dream, which we figured it out. But yeah. it was nothing that it was no lie. We, they never. I think we should have seen Franklin in the hospital. We should have seen all that shit. We should know where yeah. Mel went. We should yeah. know it was so much shit that got left out that. Being that it's a series and it picks up next year, I'm sure they'll fill in the blanks. Yeah. But how they get to showing the the, the tension between the uncle, his wife, yeah. then his parents and shit, Leon. It's so much shit that y'all yeah, left wide like, and fuck like, open. Like, and I, and I, was, I must say I'm disappointed with that shit, man. <laughs> and I hope we ain't jinx it. Man. We got to wait till next year for that to come out. Be the full, first full season without John Singleton. Um, oh. It's, it's 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 pretty cool, man. I hope it's, it should still be cool, man. You said they got uh they got uh Rare Ricky uh Rick Ross. He not fucking with that. Uh, oh, he not fucking. This with is his original story that John Singleton put his twist on. They yeah. was actually supposed to be working on something together, oh. and he hijacked the story. Oh, sure. If you ever watch Rick Ross on uh Black TV, he down there. Oh, the worms don't get him. Yeah. It's no compassion when he talk about John Singleton. Yeah. He shitty about that. Yeah. Before we get to hollering at our uh, the man of the hour, I just want to ask y'all real quick: What did y'all think about Daniel? Damn Daniel, aka Takashi. He took the stand today. He got out there. Did you say? Have you, did y'all read any of that? Yeah. Did you see the transcripts? About what he was like, who he's pointing out. Yeah. I just wanted to point out. They said he nervously pointed out two hundred people. 
He on here telling how he joined the gang, his purpose. Hey. He told him about when he used to be a bad boy. It's like a fucking movie where somebody come in there telling you he looked like an artist. And he started doing what he said, rock and roll rap. Next, you know it, it progressed. He in Europe doing shows. He come back over here. He about to do that gummo shit. He run into these uh, so-called non straight gangsters. They said he asked them, like walked down the neighborhood and asked them and bought them like three dozen bandanas or something like that. Like, yep, <laughs> that shit is strange. And you read the transcript, he's showing them up. This this is the shit. I, if it's any part I wish I could have seen. Crazy. Any part I wish I could have seen was when they said, how you do the gang, gang handshake? And he said, I need somebody to do it with me. And he was doing it with the DA. He showed them the gang. He showed the DA the gang handshake, man. I said, this shit is fucking incredible. I know that's the most gangster that motherfucker uh, lawyer ever told. They're going to write a movie by him on yeah. Netflix. And something else that stood out quick. In addition, he just said, point motherfuckers out. Like, you said, these niggas sitting over here. He pointing, bro. Point he pointing them out. He brought a trippy ring. Oh, yeah. Pointing them out. He said, yeah. trippy red part of a joke. I don't know trippy red. I don't know Trippy oh, Red or I don't know Cripple Blue. I mean, I don't, I don't know, know these niggas. I, yeah, I don't yeah, but I've heard his they name. Beefing. They they on some beefing right now. I guess Trippy messing with his girl or whatnot. Was trying to mess with his girl, but he is from another blood gang. But I guess they rival blood gangs or something. So he called them out about that. I figured that. they was using him in the same way because he's similar to Kakashi on another level. So I figured they picked him up and probably doing the same thing with him, but. Shit, I don't know. And that motherfucker said he started. Which they might be. Cause yeah. he told on him. You see what I'm saying? But he got to be committing crimes and shit, though. You can't yeah, just say he ain't a guy. He ain't doing nothing you know crazy shit. I don't think he doing nothing so oh, crazy. Oh, uh, <clears throat> The crazy thing is, too, though, they just got the image and the music and the kids like it. They yeah. Know, so. They said that. Um, where was I going? Where was I going? I got to take my mental track back and shit. I'm old. I didn't even need shit and shit. They say, oh, they said he started cooperating. Daniel said he started cooperating the next day <laughs> after they got him. Yeah. He's like, that nigga ain't get a good goddamn weekend in. That nigga said, yep, mm-hmm, yep, mm-hmm, yep, mm-hmm, and more. Yep, mm-hmm, yep, mm-hmm, and more. That motherfucker started telling the day. Yeah, he said, 40, 40 some years. He said, nope. <laughs> I give you what you need. Face said, 41 minimum. <laughs> that, what? I give you exactly what you need. Listen, man, that motherfucker, uh, if you ever watched the Takashi interview on Breakfast Club, man, you see his intelligence. He intelligent as fuck. <laughs> he knew then. This nothing surprised him. He said to myself, hmm, if I ever get caught, I'm telling all these motherfuckers. Don't nobody here look like me. I don't know these niggas. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? They are, he says well, enough though that was just bankrolling. Yeah. He said, you know what I'm saying? I had to keep the money coming so they can buy guns. That's what he said. I had to keep Jerry Takashi put out music when he get out. Are you as a DJ? Are you playing Takashi? Nah, I'm not playing. <laughs> nah. When, man, when you play I music, are you selective on who you play, or do you just play uh, what's hot? Just depending on, just depending on the crowd, really. Like, I try to play what's hot, but just depending on the crowd, because a lot of people they don't really like what's hot. You know, some people are old heads and they like it. Oh, no man. offense, no offense to the old heads. No offense to the. I old was offended. Head. <laughs> I was offended. Put on some goddamn Roger and Zaps sometimes. I, like, I got the Roger. I got the Roger and Zaps. I yeah. got the, I've been blessed on the on the music with my for my parents. But. And it's a good way to segue and talk about our guest. Shout out again, man. We up in here with DJ T Rex, uh, world famous DJ. He's turned down several contracts. One with Fifty Cent. One with Dr. Dre. He's a, a very hot commodity. <laughs> We're gonna make a drop of that, sell that, start lying and shit, motherfucker. What? What? But what's happening with you, man? Man, I'm just chilling, man. Just glad to be here, definitely. That's what's up. Uh, you from here? Originally from Michigan, but uh, I've been living in South Bend and living in here for most of my life. What part of Michigan you from? Buchanan. Buchanan. Yeah, right. I can honestly say I've never heard of that. Where's that bar? You know where Niles at? It's like right there on the, right there on the border, like right at the fire. Is it, is it close? Okay, you said, so it's right close there, like to Benton Harbor and shit? Yeah, like 30 minutes from Benton Harbor. Okay, okay. Take a, take a road called Red Bud Trail to Benton Harbor. And we talked about it off the air. You said that you used to be at the Guard. Is that how you end up down this way? Uh, no, nah, my mom uh, got an air, airline job, and then she, uh, that's when we moved to South Bend. And she got it with the BMV, so we moved out here. But I got with the guard just because I always I'm adventurous. I like to do a lot of different things, you know, see life really. And 
I was in ROTC in high school, so they pushed a lot of the military inside of my brain. So you was in the lunchroom getting on niggas' nerves in that outfit, boy. Look at that nerd I'm over there. She walking gas and left, man. right, and all over the place. I was in the green one, so they had that little green little cap that just fall on the top of your head. I'm like, bro, everybody gas. That's what's up. Did you, did you like that shit? You like yeah, that ROTC cool. shit? Yeah, they got the, the drilling ceremony. We do the marching and steps and stuff. I love that calling cadence. I love all that, man. It's fun. So how long you been down here? I've been down here for like. I like 15, 15 years, 15 years. Yeah, man, for a good minute. So I then started in most of your adult life. Okay, okay. Yeah. Why school you went to here? Uh, I started off at Perry for a semester, then I went to BD, graduated there. That's what's up. You, so did you know, uh, you look a little bit older than them, but were you familiar with Cambry and uh, Jamal? Nah, I didn't know them, but I knew I was in the same like, choir that was in. Oh, you was in the though. choir too? Yeah. The, the yeah. performance yeah. part? Yeah. Oh, this is fun. Was you out there with that permanent fake smile? Had to, had to, oh, had to, had to, had to, what's his name, Mr. Kameen, <laughs> 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 no, his name is Mr. Kameen, man, he had never yeah. smiled really, like, that was a choir teacher that you really didn't want to make mad, yeah. so you had to be on point with him. That's what's up, you, you sing? Yeah. You sing, like, I mean. I That's what's up, man. You know I, that. That. I just, I just, you know, I, I like to be behind the scenes now. You know, it's it's I'm something not like people like man. Jamal, you know, handle it and whatnot. He might have you. He looking for background dancers and shit for his little performer. He want to go just dust up and fire <laughs> shoes and <laughs> shit. Hold <laughs> your motherfucker. <laughs> That's what's up, though. So, um, have you ever had any aspirations to be a singer at any point in your life? Definitely did when I was back in back in high school. I used to love singing like music soul child, uh Luther Van Jaws, Eric Benet, like I was all them people it just it's just fire. Like I'd be trying to go in the room. My mama tell you, I'd be she bought me a karaoke machine. I was on that one every day. Like, oh yes. Man, going in, going to town, but yeah. But you should get back into it, man. I might throw you on the tape. Uh, I hear you. I hear you. I might. That's crazy, though, because when we was talking about R&B artists when uh, Jamal was here, it's crazy. It might be ageism, but Luther didn't come up. Luther. And Luther one of the few people who, like, if I'm just getting ready to do some shit, like getting ready to get up in the morning, if I don't feel like it was in a rap, mm -hmm. I'll pull up Luther's station. It'd be Luther Prince. Luther got some incredible ass fucking yeah, music, yeah. and then the voice to top it off, and then you also <clears throat> excuse me, mentioned Eric Benet. I think he's super underrated. Definitely, he's super yeah. fucking underrated, man. Uh, so how you get into DJ? DJ and really, uh, my roommate, he he's a DJ at the time, and I just was always interested in him. And, like he taught me like the few little loops, like how to load the track here, how to load the track here, and what the BPMs meant, and then I just went from there, like. My mom had her 50th birthday party last year and she needed a DJ. So I put her on to somebody. He ended up not following through, made her upset. So I was like, I'll do it, mom. I know a little bit. So she bought me a little controller. I just went in and that's how I started. So you said last year? Yeah. <clears throat> so you kind of knew to him. Yeah. And that year that you've been DJing, how? Because, like I said, we met you uh, through DJ J. Renee. How how was it for you to get yourself out here and get known? How did you actually meet her? Well, really, it, it took a lot because I deleted all social media in 2013. I really I really don't agree with social media. I feel like the negativity and everything like it's it a terror person that's not mentally prepared to be on social media, you know, down. But I uh, recently, back in February, opened up my Instagram because you got to network if you're a DJ. It's just it just is what it is, but. I met her through my little brother, and he, I guess he had her on his page, and he was like, yo, it's just cold DJ, you know, I'm trying to link y'all up, and she hit me up about the Monday, shouts out to her, you know, she she definitely showed some love, but I went out there, came out there on the Monday, and that's how we met, that was my first time meeting her, first time meeting y'all, first time meeting a lot of people. That's dope, man, that's dope as fuck. I want to delve back to what you said, <clears throat> excuse me, about the social media. Uh, it's crazy how we've been put in a position to where we have to have technology to thrive. Not to survive, you can survive without right. shit, but to thrive. Um, I used to be one of them up on Facebook all day. So now I'm pointing to talking aimlessly. And I said to myself, this shit is ignorant. Like I started looking around, I said, I'm too smart to be talking to these motherfuckers every day. 
I'm on some real shit, you know what I'm saying? It sounds fucked up, but I'm like, I start looking, I'm like, this nigga stupid. This motherfucker, we couldn't sit in real life and have a conversation and shit, but on social media, it's a fucking parody. You know what I'm saying? There's no fucking dummies. Everybody fucking smart. Everybody. Everybody's right. And they all went to meme university. (laughs) Everybody went to meme university where they know they hold the whole world based off memes. And I said to myself, what the fuck? So I had to uh, fall back on Facebook. Like right now, I only have Facebook for the show. Mm-hmm. Like I have uh, the page for the show, and then I use Instagram. I have a personal Instagram, but I don't fuck with it. When I sit on my personal Instagram, I sit there, I post Bible scriptures. That's what I do on my per- my personal one. And then I had a show one. And it, it, I'm gonna tell you, man, it, it's crazy because you you have to dumb down to interact with people. You really have to take a part of yourself off just to. And you can't, and, it, and you, it's a fine line. I want to know if you have to, if you feel this, because you got off for a, uh, a pertinent reason. So where you say it, it can destroy the week. You know what I'm saying? Because everybody are pushed or impelled to follow one thought. Everybody feel like you have to do this because everybody cool. Right. When you're trying to sell yourself or make yourself a brand, you have to concede a little bit. And like you said, getting back on there. So you had to give a little bit of yourself and take away from what you want to do just to fucking get in. Right. <laughs> How hard is that for you to like when you, because you still run into like things that you would consider ignorant mm-hmm. or something that you consider, uh, you know what I'm saying, less than fucking inspiring. How hard is it for you to integrate your brand and try to maintain your integrity at the same time? Well, really, before... I really couldn't. I just react to everything that I seen. But really, the <laughs> the military. I'm not gonna lie. Military really taught me patience and stuff. Cause like I was a platoon guy, like in charge of a whole platoon. And like, there's a lot of people that don't want to listen to you based off your age, based off your rank, based off of whatever it is. And you have to work as a team because the drill starts to hold you responsible. No matter if this person don't even want to do it, don't want to do push-ups for the day. So it took the military. Military really got me patient and you know humble for like events like this like seeing stuff like this so like whenever I see like negativity I just I'm, I just block it out like I, I know my whole purpose of having this Instagram is to move up in the, in the music industry and if it ain't nothing that's pertaining to that I try not to let it you know affect me it's, it's not it's not part of my mission that, that's something intelligent to stay especially at at 26 man because as intelligent I always felt that I was, it was hard for me to, to detach emotionally from shit. Like, I, it was easy to light a fire under me, right. man. I mean, I had on fire and some shit. And then, and like, I, that's like one of my things I look back like, I'm so shitty because you get controlled by, especially on social media, man. You be controlled by ignorant shit. It be people who ain't got a fucking <laughs> brain who have you arguing with. Yeah, you, you be arguing with. Like reading. Right. Like, <laughs> you mad that you like this shit pissed you off that bad. Yep. You be like, damn, yep. man. So, what's what's been the toughest thing for you since you just got active? Um, so about twenty five, you started at twenty five. That's that's kind of a late yeah. start to just jump into the DJ game. Where not even just DJing, but uh, I noticed everything where most of the things are clickish. Where you have to be in the click, you have to be doing certain things, you have to be in certain places. And we talked about earlier when I said that I don't even go out. Like, I don't be places and shit. So for me to do what I do, I have to get uncomfortable. You know what I'm saying? Like, how hard has that been for you knowing that you have to be in certain scenes that you're not accustomed to just to be heard or just to acclimate yourself with the environment of DJing? I mean, it's a little difficult at times because, like I said, large crowds and make me uncomfortable like I used but at the same time, I, I have benefited from it. Like, I met like, guys like y'all. I've benefited, man, like DJ J. Renee and stuff like that. So I know there's purpose to it. I just got to try to, you know, just, I don't know, like, block it out, I guess. Just, I don't know. I'm going to tell you, man, and, and I, I hate this because I'm down there the king of fucked up analogies. So I'm just now realizing that. When you try to integrate yourself in a situation like that, it's like you said you don't like big crowds. I hate big crowds. Like I just I'm introverted. You know what I'm saying? It's like I need the I need my pocket. Like I need to be around three motherfuckers who are cool with <laughs> right. and shit to no, shield yeah, me yeah. from the residents and this shit is bothering me. 
And when you say you just gotta do it, don't that shit like a prostitute too? You, don't you feel like you whoring yourself? <laughs> right. I don't wanna suck this dick, but I need that twenty dollars. Yeah, I gotta sell my body. <laughs> yeah. <know>. Like, yeah. <laughs> so how do you like? When you said you want to advance in the music industry. How much do you want to advance? Because I honestly think that the higher you ascend, the more yourself you have to give away. Right. Uh, do you have any mainstream goals? You know what I'm saying? Like what's like what is like what's mainstream for a DJ? We know like traditional DJs. When we think, especially in hip hop, you think like club DJs. Do you think radio DJs? When I say that, you have people who transcend both, like a K Slay, mm -hmm. who do club shit or Funk Flex, things like that. Even. Um, uh, call it, but these people did this at younger ages and stuff. And so, but can you see yourself on those levels? Because when you say you're an introvert, it's a DJ would be a good place because you you can be secluded. Mm -hmm. You can be on air right. and shit beyond. Can you see yourself at that level, or is that something that you want to do? That's definitely something I would want to do, like a radio station or something like that. But like as far as like clubs and festivals, I think it'll probably take me a while. To get comfortable with that type of yeah. many people at least but right now like I'm just focusing on actually opening up a lounge like I'm talking with my moms and whatnot my brothers and seeing we can open up like a family thing and do like a day lounge or something here in, in, in the city and just just somewhere somewhere different somewhere fun and whatnot and just start from there and move my way up from there and just try to get comfortable with people that show up there the crowds that just Go bigger from there. Do you have any DJs that inspire you, or like when you not when you an artist, man? You don't want. I don't like to use the word inspire as in the sense like you end up biting somebody or mocking somebody. But we do pattern ourselves after some people. It's like this is the blueprint, mm -hmm. but I like to exceed it. Is there are there any DJs that you look at like that? Well, back in the days, I said it was back in the days DJs like Debbie Jeff, uh, Kid Capri, um, Master Flex. Like those DJs, those ones that put that time, that hard work into their craft, and just to see like how how they well, where it started from where they, they they ended. Like a lot of people try to tell me add different. I mean, it's not a bad brand like to add different type of genres and type of you know music. But back in the days, if you was a hip hop DJ, they just spinning hip hop records and they were still banging the clubs. Like I cannot you know, do what they did. Like, can I just go hip hop, R&B, and just bang the clubs like that? Mm -hmm. When you say different genres, like, what do you mean? Like, as far as like EDM, rock, country, oh, okay. pop, and all that. Like, yeah. they saying, like, I mean, it's a better market because, you know, it's a diverse, diverse world, but I feel like DJ started off playing music that they love. Yeah. So why can't, why we shot away from that just because everything was electronic. And and then too, just to uh, piggyback off of that, we know that the most diverse music, the music that brings in the most diverse crowd is hip hop. Mm -hmm. Hip hop is the mo is a, uh, music that people gravitate to, regardless of your political uh, feelings, your, even racial. You know what I'm saying? Races like hip hop, Democrats, Republicans like hip hop, Chinese people like hip hop. Right. You can't say that everybody like every genre like everybody like hip hop. So I think it's. I think it's a foolishness to feel like you have to go outside your genre to be successful. Mm -hmm. And I think that if you're doing things just to be quote unquote successful, it takes away from the art. And like we were just talking about, like how much of yourself are you willing to sacrifice for, uh, you know what I'm saying, maybe a bit of fame. Um, like you said, a lot of old school hip hop, they would just spin the fuck out of hip hop, you know what I'm saying, or some sample, they'd throw that sample in and shit and bring that bitch back. Right now, if you, who your favorite? We never, I don't know if we had DJs that ever named this. I mean, you the second DJ we had on here. Who your uh, favorite top five DJs? Top five? I actually yeah. was prepared. For this. I <laughs> have my list. <laughs> and I yeah. have my list. Glad you asked that. <laughs> Glad you asked. Uh, I definitely wrote it down. Okay, you no, know, me and Julie have been talking about for a while, man, doing a little uh, TCK mix. We might have you host that ball for your about hosting the uh the table. I wouldn't mind doing that. I wouldn't mind doing that. That'd be fun. Yeah, we definitely can fuck with something like that, man. Yeah. But it's on my list I got Jam Master J, Grandmaster Flash. It's all old school really. Uh yeah. Ken Capri, Daddy Jeff, 
But a new one, DJ Drama. I like DJ Drama a lot. DJ Drama had the best big sex to be. Drama had the best big sex to be. Drama be killing, man. Yeah, I come from the clue era. I come from the clue era, but DJ Drama shit used to be charged. What you think about Red Alert? Red Alert got my best DJ song ever. Let me clear my throat. Right you heard the clear, clear my throat, haven't you? Yeah, I heard the clear my throat. That's my favorite like club DJ type song. I didn't know, know his name. Yeah. Yeah. That song hard. That shit that hard. Song hard. hard. I got that on one of my mixes. I love that motherfucker, man. Um, what like what's been the the hardest part outside of being introverted? And so what's been the toughest part in DJing for you? Uh, and just I don't know really. The toughest part of DJing. I don't have bad days. Nah, that's all easy. easy. <laughs> <laughs> definitely. This is like I was saying earlier, just playing outside of music that I'm comfortable with. Like just people. That's just the biggest yeah, hurdle. that's just the biggest hurdle because like I could mix. If you tell me to do an R and B, I can, I love R and B first off. But if you tell me to do an R and B, I can go on my list and freestyle R and B mix, and it'll all sound hard. You go do hip hop, I can freestyle hip hop. But like other genres, like I can't do it. Like, yeah. I can't. I gotta listen to it first. Like you, know, you can cue it and listen to it before you play it. Like I would have to do that with that type. So I would say that's like my biggest struggle, really, is just playing music I'm not comfortable with or haven't listened to or something like that. What's yeah. been What's been like the most surprisingly easy or something that you take into more easy than you thought you would? Anything in particular? Really, the transitions, like. My transitions, if you ever listen to my mixes and listen to like a lot of DJs like to add sound effects like when they transition into other things. But I don't I don't like to do that because if you listen to mine, it's like the blend, like you it sound it's perfect. It's yeah, it's yeah, like, crispy, I love, like, 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 like and I, I love, love that I love when people the hear that. I like to have people hear that, like, yeah, okay, this song about to come hard, but listen to them both together yeah. real quick before I blend this one yeah. in. Like yeah. that's, that's what I find like the most hard. easiest for me and it's surprising, like but I love it. I love doing it. You can hear it on my on my SoundCloud. Like so many mixes, I just I blame perfect. Yeah, I'm gonna have to fuck with it, man. I ain't know you had this I just opened it up like three, okay. three, four days ago, man. I'm, like I said, I don't, I'm new to this social media, man. Yeah. Social media is something different. I DJ. You do? I download a DJ app. He DJ. I'm shit. Trash. All my <laughs> shit turned out trash. I'll be on there with my little ass phone doing like this. Uh, uh, 10 seconds, I said, back to the podcast. <laughs> That's how I come listen. I know my line. I know my phone. I'm going to tell you some shit. I was thinking, like, I, I can't DJ. I never could. You know what I'm saying? I like music. I love music. But I, I don't disrespect the shit. I'm not the kind of motherfucker to just do some shit because I like it. I can sit back and appreciate somebody. That motherfucker's way better than me. Let me enjoy them. Yeah. And I was thinking about that in the context of acting. I was like, damn. I was like, I, oh, they're like, I couldn't act at a high level because I can't get myself over. Yeah. I'm too fucking conscious. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I'm not saying it. I don't want to sound like sissy. You know what I'm saying? I'm too aware. I can't act like that, but I can yeah. appreciate acting. Like, I could direct. I'm like, you gotta put a little masculinity. Be a little feminine. You gotta tell you to do it, you know what I'm saying? And that's and that's how come, man, like when you talk about the transition, it made me wanna listen to uh your mixes that you got because when you mention the sound effect, it's like they hiding something. Right. It's like they trying to cover that blunder and shit. So when you put your shit together, it is that shit, man, it's like my analogies. I'm the king of fuck up analogies. Yeah. And I know we all being here as men. Yeah. You ever been fucking shit up, girl? Some, some strange reason you said, I wish my friends could have seen that move. You get that, like, I wish somebody could have seen this one. I could probably never pull that one off again. Yeah, somebody should have seen that shit. Yeah, <laughs> right. But it's, it, I know it's that feeling that you get, man. We like, because when you do something at a high level, even if you humble, you still be like, damn, that shit was dope. Yeah. Like, well, if I if I spit a hard ass verse, I sit down and listen to that motherfucker 10 times. I'm like, Shit was, uh, come on, dude. I'm smart, kind. I be saying some cool shit. Like you admire your shit. You know what I'm saying? When you go back, because it's a blessing. You know what I'm saying? Because you be like, how in the fuck did I do this shit? So I, I just like, how, how does it feel? What was the biggest accomplishment you felt? I'm not even talking about where somebody else said you did good. Somebody, but yeah, not like some personal shit where you sit back and be like, damn, I'm almost there. 
Have you ever had that feeling yet? Yeah, that's what I was saying. Like with the when I'm with my transitions, like yeah. that's that's like really yeah. what I feel. I'm about to talk about you like, DJ transition. That's, just, like, that's, transition. that's exactly like when I get feedback from people too, and they say, "Man, them transitions is like on point," and that's like that's what I'm proud of. That's like one thing that I I'll literally be and like I gotta tell you, like I literally be and I put it on loop, and I have the beat just running. It could just be the instrumental or it can just be a verse or the chorus with another beat. And I have it running for like 10 minutes just because it just sounds, it just sounds so fucking good, man. Like, it's crazy, man. And I'm going to tell you, man, like, I'm, I'm weird here with creators. Motherfuckers who get busy. That's what they get me excited. Shout out to Nicholas. Nicholas Nintendo in the building. I'm going to give you my, where my, when Nicky had that show of Icon and shit, we had that cup. We had that line, the party was playing that Polly Piper and shit, the mother walking that line. Stupid, man. He, I know when he went back and watched that, he was like, God damn, the Sinai Kool Aid is next. And you know what I got him. This is my moment. You know what I'm saying? That shit. Or, or I look at your fights. Anytime I see you nail a fucking pool counter, when I see you nail a pool counter, I'll be like, that shit was fucking beautiful. I wonder if he know how fucking fluid that shit was. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm. I know when you go back, you admire your work, and she's like, that shit was nice. That motherfucker ain't this whole club. Yeah, yeah, and when, but then you rewind that bitch, and you just rewind it, and you just rewind it. Hell, hell. <laughs> hell, and you don't see shit. All you see is your shoulder, your elbow, your fist. You don't see the crowd. You know, all you do is focus on your self analogy time. If you've ever made a sex tape where you watch it, you only watch yourself. You only look at you. You only look at you. That's how that's that painted pool. That's that painted pool right there. You're looking at her the whole time. Yeah, yeah. 30 minutes. I'm going to watch it. Yeah, yeah. This is the part where I lift her leg. Watch out of here. It's not about this. It was fluid. Yeah, I'm the best leg lifter in the world. But that's how it is, man. We can appreciate your own work. We talked about your favorite file. We talked about you being in this shit for a year. Where do you see yourself? And this is our job interview question. This is we are that. This is like the job. Where do you see yourself in five years in this DJ game? You're old. You old as shit. Thirty one. Thirty one. Washed up. Where do you see yourself at? Now, like I said. Uh, I want to see myself having opened up my own family lounge, you know, with my mom, my dad, my brothers, and some other family if they won't really, but just opening something that's, that's just different, like having stuff during the day, whether it's like nail shows or fashion shows or just blues night, you know, jazz night, karaoke, just having something different every day that somebody can just be like, all right, what are we going to do today in Indy? And just have somewhere to go, just vibe out and just have good food and good music. Just chill, man. Like we don't have that here. I'm, I work for the airlines now, so I fly a lot of places in like Atlanta. They got day lounges, heli day lounges out there. Mm -hmm. like, it's just vibe. Florida, they got day lounges. Vegas, they ain't really got that out here. So I want to just hype up the city a little bit, give somebody something different, you know, to vibe out with, talk about, really. You a flight attendant? Oh no, I'm a, I work on the ramp. Loading bags, you ain't gonna see me in no. I'm like, okay, okay. Nah. You, you grab your, you nah. in a bit of a crash. You get, you doing a little shit, you get motherfucker. All the seat belt up, uh, pulling it. Nah, you ain't gonna catch me. Nah. You can't tell me shit in a bit of a bit of a crash, bitch. I'm not gonna remember nothing you said, bitch. I'm right. standing, I'm waiting to the window. So when we get low enough to jump, I'm jumping on my roll. <laughs> nah, we just load the bags in and on and off the plane. I thought I'd just. That's what's up, bro. You be flying all over. Yeah. Oh, so I just go to Cali tomorrow, actually. Oh, yeah. Just for the day. Just chill out there, buddy. Don't stun on us like that again. I'm sorry. I'm Don't stun on us. I'm going to work. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to work. Yeah, I'm going to Cali. Yeah. Well, I'll get the line. Oh, really? I'll be in Hawaii on Saturday. Yeah. Yeah. For no reason. Um, where, where can people find you at as far as your, your page and then your SoundCloud? Uh, really, Instagram, I'm under Trey, that's T R E underscore Phillips 5. And then SoundCloud is under DJ T Rex, so that's DJ T R E and two X's. So that's really where I'm at right now. I'm going to try to venture out on more social media whenever my mind get right, I would say. <laughs> I don't, I guess this bit of advice, you don't have to get on Facebook all the day, you can just make a Facebook page, and you can actually link it to your uh, Instagram, Instagram. Like okay. you, don't, you ain't got to just jump in the fire with them goddamn animals, 
Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. 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 That's exactly. I'm trying to figure out how to manage my boxing shit without being asked to be on that shit, man. But just, just that shit so much. Yeah, man. it's too much. That yeah. shit. Um, you you don't, you don't put your shit on Spotify or none of that shit. I tell them how to do all that. We're gonna help you up. Okay. We're gonna help you up with that. Oh uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, we about to wrap this up, man. Anything you wanna say to people, man? Your people uh, listen. I, wait, I meant to ask you, are you uh, do you have family that's musically inclined also? Yeah, I got family that's like in South Bend and in Michigan, but as far as like down here, not really. Okay, you know, okay. Like, so your brother don't do that? Nah, okay. Bro, I got family that just kill on the drums. I got cousins killing on the drums and on the piano. Like, they just natural by ears. Like, yeah, that's like, why. Yeah, we got to give a like, shout out to your brother, man, for introducing you to Jay Renee, who introduced oh, yeah, my brother, uh, yeah, my brother is named Mario, but he does. Oh, like that's your brother, the actor? Yeah, he, okay, does, he was in that same play Cambria was in. His yeah, yeah. Life, some, shout out uh, to Mario. Yeah, I forgot y'all's brothers. Yeah, that's my little brother, man. So. Uh, shout out to him. We gonna have to get him up here, man. Kick it with him. Yeah, he's yeah. in the process of writing some damn some little shit. Yeah. Where it's gonna uh, require us having actors. Yeah, he's doing his thing, man. He was in a uh, killer couple. He was in a couple series of that. He did uh, Empire. He was an extra in a couple seasons of that. He did Her Lies and Secrets one, two, and three. Like, and he out here trying to he trying to do on his grind too. So I'm proud of him too. So shouts out to my brother. Shout out to Mario. You know, shouts out to Jay Renee. You know, for putting me on with y'all really and that linked up. That linked up is definitely something I, I agree with for the good for the city. For the definitely. So keep keep doing that. Shout out to the Polish lady too. She show love too for me and uh, Brandy. Hey, I didn't know that was your girl's artist. She an artist. Yeah. Man, I did not know that shit. That boy on Michael Jackson nasty. Nasty. doing all that, man. man. Michael Jackson nasty. I like that shit. I didn't even know that was her page. That shit fire. Um, but then yeah, you got anything you like? Anything you want to say? Man, don't feel forced. <laughs> you got nothing to say. Just go on my just go on my SoundCloud, DJ T Rex. You know, if y'all wanna see the the realest transitions, like for real, like don't sleep on me, man. But he coming. And then shouts out to this R and B show next 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 month, right? Yeah, October yeah. the twelfth. That's how Shout out to that. We, we got uh, Soul in the City coming out. We haven't really started promoting it heavy. We got four artists on tap. Shout out to Cambria, uh, Jamal White. Out in Victoria, and shout out to Terrence Anderson. It's gonna be dope, man. Well, they don't think they, I don't think they shine enough light on the R&B talent here in the city. And we gonna, we looking to change that October the 12th. We have more information. We actually looking for a uh, potential spon- sponsors. Uh, we have a sponsor, two sponsorship packages um, that we gonna that we offering to people who are out here trying to grow their small business. It's gonna be dope, man. And we're going to have DJ T-Rex in the building, DJ, and dropping them motherfucking immaculate transitions on y'all motherfucking mm-hmm. head. No oh. sound effects. <laughs> Not a single sound Not effect. A single sound effect. <laughs> Just R&B. <laughs> Shout out to my motherfucking favorite Muslim down there trying to play uh, Mr. <laughs> Who we trying to play, man? This nigga down there trying to play Boston George. He down here. He out there taking trips. I ain't saying too much, man, but I ain't tell my nigga be careful. Time. Said in one podcast, coming to America, you have yeah. me weak. Yeah. <laughs> you have me weak. <laughs> Shout out to motherfucker the side, man. He man, down side, there. Man. That nigga down there living like a fucking. Check on me, man. Hey, that nigga down there living with no responsibilities. Yeah. That nigga crossed. That nigga hit a couple. Of, two he states he later, he's saying fuck everything. He get past two states, he like fuck y'all. Oh, no, no, he just all, 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 all boundaries. I had to tell that nigga, I said, I'm tired every time I see you either fucking high on the couch with another nigga or sitting around with niggas all the time, man. I'm, I, I'm tired of seeing you with niggas, man. You go on vacation, you don't go to hang around with niggas, man. Stop that <laughs> shit. You embarrassing the team. <laughs> you embarrassing. I need you to catch a motherfucking Antonio case out there. Fart on, <laughs> fart on a doctor, nigga. Do some live a little. <laughs> you guys think you want to say juice? Catch a headline, nigga. Hell yeah. Anything you want to say? Man, make sure y'all catch this episode coming out Friday. We waiting for Friday. Friday. We're going to start going early. Oh, yeah, no, nah, yeah, we're we about to start, start dropping in this day, man. So yeah. you, can, you can watch this, man. Check us out the next day, man. We're going to be, it should be on YouTube. Okay. Everything will be streaming on every, all services. We're going to say Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Tuesday, Just Tuesday. be safe. Test around, my Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah.
We dropping on Friday, man. Motherfuckers ain't trying to fuck with us on the weekend. I'm telling you, man, because the weekend, it's like motherfuckers really gonna be on. Uh, niggas down on the weekend. Again, yeah. We down on the weekend. Yeah. Niggas like, oh shit, I knew it's. Them niggas here. Yeah. That's how they feel about us on Mondays and Y'all shit. Y'all be on the same shit weekend come. You like, man, down like a motherfucker. Every day is a Tuesday for me. <laughs> Every day is a Tuesday. But no, uh, we got the shit coming. Uh, I'm telling you, man, just in there, it's crazy. There's so much fucking talent in this fucking room, man. And it's all about linking up and building each other. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, people think you got to really reach out to a name, a so-called name or somebody who got some kind of clout or whatever. You ain't got to do that. You can build from right within and come up with some dope ass shit. And that's what we want to continue to do. We a platform and shit that's um, here not only for ourselves but here for everybody. You know, so we provide seats for everybody and shit to express themselves and talk about their brand. All we ask is respect and return. This has been another episode of the best podcast you never heard or could see to nobody. We can catch y'all back next uh, week with episode one hundred and six in no part. How I tell the conceited nobody. Every Tuesday at 8 p.m.